Episode 20, talking about lightning and lightning nodes with Jimmy Song. Interested in Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a very vague concept to a lot of people. Need to know more about cryptocurrency? We're going to talk about the basics. You know, this is something that people just have no idea about what crypto is. How about buying, selling, and mining? Tony, I think that's one of the things that's going to make us a little different from some other shows. We're getting our hands dirty. Then listen to Gary Leland and Tony Sakala, better known as the Crypto Cousins, on the Crypto Cousins podcast. This week's price... The price of Bitcoin is $8,926. That's down $2,146.78 since last week, or 19.4%. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Gary Leland here. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And this is Tony Sakala. We have a great interview today with Jimmy Song about the Lightning uh, Network and Lightning Nodes. Um, That's going to be kind of cool. So, but I do want to like before we get into that, we don't do a lot of chit chat before these interviews because these interviews seem to go on a long time. And Tony, have we ever done a show on time at the right amount of time? No, we never. We (laughs) thirty minutes was our goal, and well, we've never met it. (laughs) We've never met it ever. Um, So you can forget that this is not going to be thirty minutes either. So, and I'm. Scared if we set our goal at 40 minutes, then it'll, they'll all be over an hour. So we keep that 30-minute right. goal. <laughs> um, but I do want to share with everybody two things real quick. Number one, uh, if you subscribe to – if you are listening to us on something like uh, iTunes or I mean, uh, YouTube or a website or something, if you go to CryptoCousins.com slash subscribe, I made one page that is every place you can find us. So no matter what you like using, whether it's Facebook groups, whether it's Discord, Telegram, or whatever – you just have to know one website address, CryptoCousins.com slash subscribe. And the only things there are subscription buttons. So that makes it easy. And I also want have you seen this new wallet from Cousin Risen? No. Yeah, he's made a new uh, wallet that he sent me the link to. They're taking pre-sales now. But he's kind of like, I'm not saying he's copying my idea because I'm certain he didn't get it from me. That I know. But he's kind of doing mm-hmm. the idea I had when I, because I bought a small laptop. And I keep my wallet on that, and I use that laptop just as my wallet. Well, he's come out with a Android pad or Android tablet that is just a wallet. So basically a hardened device right. that just runs wallets. Right. That's all that's cool. on it. And it's – um. Yeah, like you said, a hardened. It's been modified. It's a modified version of Android Five, which strips out much of the bloatware and preloaded uh, that comes in your uh, that automatically comes preloaded in it. But it's uh, preloaded with pre-screened wallets and apps. Um, he says that iOS has a limited selection of crypto apps, and the Android Play Store contains a large number of malicious apps. Um, so these are loaded with apps that are pre-screened. Um, so you know, for two hundred fifty. You can get in and get the beta version of the wallet. It's the uh, Wilco wallet because his company is Roger Wilco. And I'm trying to find what wallets it comes with. It comes with Mycelium, Coinomi, Jax, Green Address, Coinbase, and more. Yeah, so it's automatically got these on there. And it's basically it's preloaded. You, yeah, you just turn cool. it on and use it. I mean, turn it off when you get through. It's not like a tablet to go around, you know, reading your newspaper with. Well, this is this is a great idea. You know, we're doing this in the mining space. We're introducing people to mining with a plug and play miner. They don't have to download uh, the different mining apps. You know, they don't have to know the difference between CC miner and DW, uh, EWBF or DSTM. Those are literally the names of the miners. D- W E W B F and D S T M. Uh, who need, who wants to sort through all that junk? Uh, we've sorted through that, and we present a plug and play mining where people just plug it in, and it starts mining for them. They can go ahead and modify it afterwards. Again, I'm putting a plug in for Ethan, but uh, we do. I do like the idea. You know, this is a new field, and people don't want to make those hard decisions. So I love this idea, cousin. Risen really has. Uh, Come up with a great concept. You had the same exact idea. You did it by buying a small laptop and keeping it uh, really clean and just putting on some wallets. 
Cool. Yeah, that's all I have on there. So it's the same thing. All that's on my laptop, I took everything off that was on there that I didn't need, and all I have on there are wallets. The only place it's been is to an exchange to download a wallet, you know, uh, or download coins to my wallet. So it's the same kind of thing. But if you want to check that out, I made a short link for you, cryptocousins.com slash Wilco, W-I-L-C-O, Wilco. They run $250. Evidently, they're starting to arrive now for people who've bought them. And if you uh, put uh, Cousins or Cousin or Crypto Cousin or anything in the um, recommended field or the, the there's a field for who told you about us, he's going to give us a small bit. So it's an affiliate link. I oh, guess. a little referral. Oh, we have an affiliate yeah. with Wilco Wallet. Well, fantastic. Well, you know, we'll have to add it. To- I didn't even know about that. I'd already put him in the show notes oh. and he said, hey, there's an affiliate program. I said, oh, wow. We'll, we'll take advantage of that. Well, fantastic. Well, we're disclosing that and uh, we'll add it to worldwidewallets.com, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it looked like a good, it looked like a good idea and we've had uh, Cousin Risen on two shows. So he's a friend of the show and we like him anyway. So we're happy to help promote uh, his wallet. So take a look at that at CryptoCousins.com slash Wilco and see what you think. And uh, Tony just mentioned our mining machine. If you haven't seen our mining machine, go to TurnkeyMiners.com and you can see what we're doing there. But today's show. Mm -hmm. Is that a turnkey mining or turnkey miners? Turnkey mining. I know we have both. Turnkey mining. I think it's Mm -hmm. TurnkeyMining.com. You're right. Mm Mining.com. Yeah, I'm out of it. So uh, thanks for the correction there. I just talk. I don't even think about what I talk about. I've had enough coffee. to. I've only had one cup. I need about three to get going. (laughs) But this week we're talking with Jimmy Song. Um, Jimmy Song uh, is a pretty smart dude. Tony, why don't you um, give us a short bio? Go over Jimmy's bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy's, he's a Bitcoin developer and entrepreneur based in Austin, Texas. And... um, for a majority of career, you know, he worked as a software developer for different companies, different fields, including entertainment, healthcare, e-commerce. Uh, in 2014, he joined a company called Monitas, where he led the development of a Bitcoin integration with open transactions for almost a year. So I, that's where he started to develop this love of Bitcoin and the knowledge of Bitcoin. And now he's really an outspoken leader and educator in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, most developers, you know, can keep a low profile uh, and not are not out there like Jimmy is. He has over 83,000 followers on Twitter and over 14,000 followers on both Medium and YouTube. Uh, He's got a show called Off Chain. And uh, people are watching him regularly uh, talk about Bitcoin and the, the various technologies. So we're really uh, very happy and honored to have uh, Jimmy on the show today. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to hear him. And he, he's from Texas. So, you yeah, know, we like him automatically since we're, we're Texans <laughs> to boot, right? So, Absolutely. Uh, so why don't we just go, instead of messing around more, why don't we go straight to the interview? Because I found this stuff amazing. This was great information. So let's go to the interview. Well, Jimmy, thanks for coming to the show. I really appreciate it. I love watching your shows, as a matter of fact. Uh, I think you have a great show, Off the Chain. Is it Off the Chain? Off Chain. Off Chain, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, But today I want to get into the Lightning Networks. I'm really excited about this subject and really really wanted to talk to you about it because I want to learn, and that's kind of what our show is about, our audience learning while we learn. We don't claim to be experts, but we try to talk to a lot of experts that can help us know better and share that with our audience. Can we go into the Lightning Network and just give us your definition and description? What is the Lightning Network? Well, so Lightning Network is a network of payment channels. And payment channels are sort of like the atomic unit of, uh, of a, a, what or what a Lightning Network is made out of. And you can think of payment channels sort of as like um, if I pay you five uh, Bitcoin and you pay me back three Bitcoin and then I give you one Bitcoin, that's like a net of three Bitcoins to you. Instead of doing three separate transactions, we can just do one transaction, right? Like this is what you would call just settling the net instead of, uh, you know, recording each transaction. And uh, and that's more or less what a payment channel is. You can you can do lots and lots of transactions, um, but only settle the net amount. Uh, I think in uh, banking parlance, that's called technical netting or something like that. Uh, but, you know, it, instead of just like me giving you five dollars and then you giving me three and then me giving you one, it's it's just me giving you three. And that's uh That's a lot easier. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like the net transaction. Yeah, yeah. So you have a bunch of these net transactions, and uh, and you know if if I have a channel open with you and you have a channel open with somebody else, then uh, then I can send to that other person through you uh, using two payment channels, right? Like I you, I'm sure you've done this with friends where you're 
uh, out at dinner and you go, okay, well, can I pay for, uh, can you pay for me this time? And then uh, later on, it uh, turns out that person owes, uh, you know, a mutual friend of yours and that mutual friend owes you. And, you know, you, you end up just sort of settling it out that way. It's, it's, a, it's a lot like that. Uh, you, can, you can figure out how to pay somebody else on the network using a lot of these payment channels. And it's, uh, it's you know, uh, sort of a natural extension of a digital ledger, if you will. So this speeds up the network, just the whole general network, because there's not as, they're all in one transaction instead of three transactions on your example? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the really cool uh, part of it is you can sort of, um, you can you can set up these channels so that if anyone tries to sort of publish like the mid state transaction and by mid state I mean like if I pay you five Bitcoin and you pay me like one Bitcoin it's uh, if there were a way to cheat you would publish the one uh, the mid state transaction where I'm paying you five and just sort of hope that you forget about the uh, one that you paid me right and I would be out one Bitcoin and you would be up that one Bitcoin. Um, so there, there's sort of like uh, uh, ways in which uh, the light payment channels are set up so that if you try to cheat and do something like that, um, I get all of your Bitcoin in the channel. And, and oh. that's, uh, that, that's very important because if you don't have that, then, uh, then there's incentive for someone to cheat. Uh, so the whole, uh, you know, the math of it is such that uh, at any point, if somebody tries to cheat, then you can just sort of take all of the money in that in that channel. But, you know, you're not incentivized to cheat for exactly that reason, because the other person has the power to punish you. Uh, but as long as, you know, both people play fair, uh, both channels play fair it, or both sides of the channel play fair, everything goes through fine. And the game theory is set up or the incentives are set up so that you know, no one is really uh, incentivized to cheat. And that creates a network uh, where you can just send money to anybody. And you can do it more or less instantly because you have the threat of being able to publish that transaction uh, if you try to do something weird. Um, and, uh, and, and that works. So, Jimmy, the game theory behind it is really what keeps it uh, working, keeps people honest, because the, the risk involved in cheating is much greater than the, the, the gain from cheating. Yes, yes, exactly. And, the, uh, and that, that's the basis of the entire Lightning Network, is that you, you always sort of have the threat of being able to publish this stuff on chain if, if somebody does something wrong. Uh, but the fact that you can sort of allows you to do these transactions more or less instantly. And so, unlike uh, an on-chain transaction, which has to be broadcast to every node on the network, every copy of Bitcoin's ledger, which we call the blockchain, has to know about any transaction that's on-chain. Uh, but as soon as, uh, but with Lightning transactions, no one else has to know about it. It's just you and the per and you know the person that's on the other end of the channel. Even the in-between nodes have to know something, but they don't know where it's going or who it's for. They do know the amount, but they don't. They don't really know that much more than that. Uh, so, so it's it, more private. Yeah. So it's it's more private in that way. Um, and you know, once you settle, uh, you you only have to settle. You know, once in a while when you run out of money on the channel. Um, it's not like a credit card where you know people are issuing debt or something like that. This is actual like money that you have to commit to the channel, and you can only spend that much. Um, so there's no sort of like fractional reserving or anything like that. So, um, you know, having a good amount of money on the Lightning Network is in your interest as the network grows. So there's sort of that network aspect as well. As more people are on the network and more you can pay more people more quickly and with less fees, uh, more people are actually going to get on it and so on and so forth. So um, there, there's a massive incentive for everyone to get on it once once the ball gets rolling. So does this fulfill the promise of like buying? Buying a cup of coffee with Bitcoin? I think you can. I uh, I mean, like <laughs> these things are like this is one of those things where um, I, I'm still kind of skeptical of uh, Bitcoin as a medium of exchange because I think most people are buying it as a store of value, right? Like, um, and when you have a really good store of value, uh, according to Gresham's law, you know, good money uh, people store the good money and spend the like. It, this looks very useful, but it's one of those things where, you know, it could be like a subway system in a city that no one uses. Um, it could be <laughs> a subway system that everyone uses, right? Like it's it's really up to the market and you have to sort of listen to the market because the market's right. 
Well, Gary and I are big hodlers, so uh, I, 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 we get where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like so many people yeah. don't, you know, like buy something and then regret it later because like uh, that ends up being like a $10,000 sewing machine or something. Cause, uh, oh, yeah, right, like, right. No, I know I have $3,000 sunglasses. Yeah, I, like who? It, it's terrible, right? Like, you, <laughs> And then like other people are like, oh, well, you should just backfill your Bitcoin whenever you spend it. Then and that's just a really terrible credit card. Right. Like you're you're just spending U.S. dollars, but doing it in a way where you uh, you don't you, know, you, you have to pay right away. You have no chargeback ability. You don't earn any points. So it doesn't really make sense. Hey, Jimmy, I have a question. Do <clears throat> with the lightning network coming out, uh, if I'm correct, you have to have lightning nodes for the lightning network. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so a lightning node is basically somebody that has opened lots of channels. So you have to open a payment channel with somebody in order to be on the lightning network. Right. Like that's that's the base. You, that uh, uh, The lightning network is made up of a bunch of payment channels. And uh, and you're going to want to open payment channels with people that have payment channels to lots of other people. Right. Like that's that that makes it more useful. Um, so a hub is basically somebody that has payment channels open with a lot of people. And it's, uh, you know, that that uh, that allows you to pay any of the people that it's connected with. But the Lightning Network is such that you can, uh, as long as you're connected to them on the network somewhere, you should be okay. You don't necessarily have to go to a centralized person. Um, although, you know, obviously there are some benefits to that because they might be more trustworthy and won't you don't have to like punish them or like um you know take care of that headache that sort of headache um but you know there there are all sorts of uh benefits to having being a hub or having hubs on the network um so i saw that there are 872 lightning nodes on the test work network now representing mm-hmm. 3052 channels on the on the mm-hmm. test net i guess Mm-hmm. But I also saw that on the real network, there are 29 lightning nodes running right now on the BTC, on the Bitcoin main net. Does that sound right to you? Well, so it was 29 like a day and a half ago. I think a lot more people are downloading and, uh, and playing with it. Um, at last I heard, it's at least 60. Um, and, you know, all, all you have to do to uh, open one is install the software and open a channel with somebody that's already on the network. Um, I know Blockstream is accepting uh, payment channels uh, to their store. Um, and that's that's what that's about. So I imagine most of them are connected to Blockstream or to each other or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I, it's experimental technology, right? It's a subway no one's ridden yet. So, um, you know, the few people that are going on it tend to be like more the engineers that are just checking it out and making sure everything works properly. Um, I, I would wait a little bit uh, before opening your own Lightning node. The security properties of Lightning are not well understood yet. And we need to, we need, we need people to just sort of experiment with, with it. You know, you don't, you don't, um, you don't want to be one of the first people that's ever flown an airplane unless you're a special. <laughs> right? Makes you, sense. You, you, you want to, you want to wait until it's a, it's a bit more of a proven technology. And this is why I say like, you know, it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm glad all of, all of, all of this is happening, but infrastructure build out takes time. And, uh, and you know, you can't, you can't just like go into it whole hog. You, you want people to be careful. This is money. So, um, you know, you don't want people to lose it. Uh, I mean, they're they're encouraging you to put only a little bit of money in lightning channels if you're going to experiment with it. And I imagine it's mostly like early adopters and things like that. So that that's how it should progress. So we shouldn't we have a node running and we were going to Tony and I both run nodes and we were going to run lightning nodes, but we don't want to set those up yet. You're saying. Well, I mean, you can set it up, and if if it's money that you don't mind losing, like ten, twenty dollars or something like that, just to see how it works, and so you can talk about it intelligently, um, that's totally fine. Just don't put like five Bitcoin on there; you might <laughs> lose it, right? Like, um, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. Know, one of the yeah. things about Lightning that people I, I I don't think people really understand yet is that you have to have your keys online most of the time, especially if you're a hub, uh, because you need to sign things going back and forth. Um, and that key needs to be online. Well, if that private key is online, that by definition, you know, it's a hot wallet, so people can come in and, uh, you know, look for it, hack it, take something to work. Um, but th- that's one of the things that you have to be kind of careful about with Lightning. So, it, where would someone, where do people go to find out that, about uh, 
building a node if they wanted to build? What would be the best place for them to get information on that? Well, I think uh, there there are a bunch of instructions out there already, and it depends on which client you're using. I mean, if you're using Zap Wallet, um, you would go to the Zap Wallet GitHub repo and download the re- the latest release. Um, I think there's Eclair and uh, the Lightning Labs Wallet. Um, so, I mean, w- whichever one that you want to try, that's what you would get on there. And there's there's a common standard, so I think they more are more or less all on the same network. Um, if you want to just play with it, I would uh, encourage you to open a, a Lightning or start a Lightning node on Testnet because Testnet is not real Bitcoin. So mm-hmm. you, you can uh, go get some Bitcoin, uh, Testnet Bitcoin using any of the Testnet faucets. They're, they just give them out because you know developers need to do stuff with it. And it's a good way to experiment. Um, and you know the network is obviously a lot bigger there, so you can probably... Um, experiment with more things. Uh, but, you know, that's that's a way to do it without risking any money. So, um, you know, and especially if you're curious about this sort of technology and how it works and, um, you know, how quickly you can do certain things, um, that that's the way to do it. So it sounds like it's, it's still in the engineering phase. And uh, so your average Bitcoin user is really uh, waiting and watching. Uh, and it's more the pioneers, people who want to get their hands dirty and just uh, see what it's about, uh, downloading code and, and probably still even compiling code to get some of these things to work, uh, which is going to take a lot of our beginner users right out of the picture. Yeah, at least for now. But I mean, be patient, right? Like this is the sort of thing uh, you want proved out. You don't want to be, like I said, like uh, the pa- a passenger on the first commercial flight. You want to <laughs> be on the like fifth that. or sixth one at the, at, at the earliest. <laughs> Um, so you, yeah, just uh, just wait it out, um, I, and I'm I, and I'm sure um, you know people will learn more about it and and become smart about it. It's your money, right? And this is one of the things about Bitcoin that I really love is that you're you're your own bank, but with great power comes great responsibility. And if you're your own bank, but you you know like lose a lot of money, well then that's kind of on you. So. Um, you know, uh, just be careful out there and know what you're getting into before you do something. Um, but, you know, that said, there's a lot of exciting things coming. So go for it. I've also heard that um, lightning nodes were going to require proof of stake eventually. It's it's not exactly proof of stake. Um, what it is, is that if you're if you're sort of a hub and you, you need to have a lot of Bitcoins already there. Right. Like you need you need to open lots of channels with other people. And that means you have to have a lot of Bitcoins sort of in the lightning network. And this is uh, this is one of the design challenges is you're going to have that many that many channels open. Um, You have to sort of lock up a lot of funds. And uh, and so how do you get compensated for locking up so much funds? Um, Well, you get compensated because you're sort of the conduit for a lot of these transactions. And, you know, you you don't have to take very much, but you could take a tiny slice of every uh, every transaction. So. People are sort of calling that proof of stake because it, it it means you have a lot of money on there and you can prove that you have and you're sort of conduct helping conduct transactions. So it has sort of some superficial similar similarities to proof of stake, uh, but it's it's not exactly that. Um, it's uh, it's it's something pretty different and it's it's something uh, that uh, you know we we don't really know how it'll turn out it's it's you know all all of the engineering like uh you know is one thing but you know when it meets the market it's uh it's something else usually so do you so gary and i are yeah oh, go ahead tony we're so we're you know we're running our full notes you know because philosophically we, we want to be part of the network and uh people are excited about i guess running a lightning though because they think well okay we can get some transaction fees out of it and, and this is actually a profit center but it sounds like today it's still an engineering uh, test, and that it's really not something that someone can, you know, start downloading something and and building something like uh, the way they're building nat- master notes today, where that's less risky and people can just kind of get into that and 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 start making money in a proof of stake fashion. So it's really not that yet. It's more of an engineering test bed. Yeah, I mean I, I it's still being built out, right? Like and mm-hmm. uh, you don't we don't really know how it'll work yet. It's um you know it's early um and you know we'll we'll see where it goes, but that's that's uh how I would characterize it. I if mean it's just, really exciting. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. If you were just guessing, would you guess that's gonna be I mean and not holding you to it and I know you don't know, but is it going to be more like 
a thousand bitcoins to have a lightning node, a hundred, ten. Uh, I mean, are there a lot of people who won't have a shot of being one at all? Uh, to be like a hub? Yeah. Um, I mean, so here's the weird thing. Um, you can be a hub uh, with almost nothing uh, as long as you're you're sort of like um, selling goods and services. So uh, if, for example, you're you're like a store and you sell some good or service, and mostly people are paying you, but you're not paying other people, then you can become sort of like a stronger hub over time. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, like, it's kind of like, uh, but if if on the other hand, you're you're somebody that's constantly paying out, then even if you start with a lot of money, um, you know, you, you eventually become like less and less influential as you have less and less money in the channels. So... Um, it's, it's this weird, uh, it's a, it's a dynamic system and it, it's hard to predict exactly how things will go. And there are no hard and fast rules about like how much money you're going to need to make how much, um, because, uh, we, we don't really know that much about how it's going to get used yet. Um, if for example, this becomes like the killer app for tipping, for example, and people are constantly tipping out. Um, then, you know, people that are good content producers that constantly get tipped, well, they'll become stronger nodes over time. And, you know, you'll have more and more influence over the network or be able to collect on more fees as you, as you have more and more money in your channels. Uh, but if you're in the other, if you're, you know, if something else becomes like the killer app, um, then, you know, something, it, it might be different. It, it's really hard to tell is what I'm saying. And it really depends on how people use it. But for me, like I have a store and a, quite a few websites. I could take advantage of it right away without, since I'm just bringing in money. Yeah. Yeah. You still have to put in some money into each channel. Um, it doesn't have to be very much, but it's, uh, it's, it's to prevent cheating. Uh, like I said before, like that whole, um, right. Right. Uh, thing. So each channel needs to have at least a little bit from both sides, so that you know there's uh, there the in incentives are aligned properly. It's um, kind of like but, a, yeah, sounds yeah. like you have to have some skin in the game, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like you can think of it kind of like a bond or something that you're posting, and then you get that back if you if you act fine. Um, but stuff like that uh, is is what you have to kind of think about. But yeah, it, it's uh, if you have a store and you accept lightning transactions, um, I imagine you'd be on, more on the intake. Uh, hopefully, you can pay your vendors uh, through a lightning channel, so you're not having to constantly settle out to um, pay them uh, pay them on chain or something like that. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, th this is the sort of thing that you have to you know think about and figure out. It's uh, it's it's very uh, yeah, and I, I imagine if, if exchanges become like these big hubs, then they'll they'll constantly take in money, um, but then you know like publish uh, transactions on chain to you know pay people out or send it to cold storage or something like that. So yeah, it, it's it's a it's a fascinating economic um, experiment and model and stuff like that that uh, that I'm I'm excited to see how it turns out. Well, would Bitcoin nodes, as we know them today, eventually disappear? Oh, no, no. They, you, you still need Bitcoin nodes. Um, but I, I can imagine that being less of an emphasis, um, you know, block size becoming a little less relevant because you can do all of these lightning uh, transactions. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, there, there's there's a ton of uh, possibilities in that regard as well. Um, you know, if, if side chains become a big thing, then, then that might become... Uh, sort of the way. And, and the nice thing about sidechains is that you can build up a huge blockchain on the sidechain. And then if it becomes too bloated, you could just have everyone leave for the main chain, throw that blockchain away, and then have everyone come back to a fresh chain. So um, there are things like that that you can do to sort of save on space. Um, we just have to figure out like uh, what the security properties of these things are and then go from there. So Jimmy, regarding the timing, like Bitcoin, every 10 minutes, a new block is created. Uh, new blocks are, 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 are mined. So the sort of the heartbeat of Bitcoin is 10 minutes. And so a lightning node, basically, you're getting sub 10 minute confirmations uh, on your transaction. Really, isn't that the big shift here? Yeah, I, I mean, that's uh, it's it's not even sub 10 minutes, like sub second. It's it's however <laughs> fast you can communicate with one other node with with Bitcoin. Even if you post a transaction in the mempool, it doesn't get out to the rest of the network for at least a few seconds. With uh, with a payment channel, it's however fast you can move. 
Um, and that that's one of the beautiful things about it. Uh, but and it's there's no heartbeat, right? There's no sort of rhythm that the en- entire network has to go on, which is more or less what these blocks on the blockchain are. You you don't have to walk to the beat of another drummer. You can you can do whatever you want with uh, with the payment channels you have. Yeah, it's an exciting technology. Yeah, I, I think uh, we we've got a really good uh, base of knowledge now. Thanks uh, for covering it. Will this just show up in people's wallets when it's working? When it's available in their wallet, just they'll see something different, like Lightning Network, or I I. I th- I would think so. Um, it's it's hard because it's a uh, it's a very different paradigm than like current wallet designs. Uh, current wallets, you you more or less have like an address that uh, you get from somebody and then you send to them, or you give them an address from your wallet. Um, with payment channels, you sort of have like um, your node ID or something like that, um, and then somebody and then there's like a routing algorithm and all this that that happens behind the scenes, but uh, you kind of have like an identity, but it's not exactly an identity. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't know how well it fits into the current wallet par- like wallet UIs that we have now, uh, but I, I have no doubt there will be Lightning wallets uh, being integrated to current Bitcoin wallets that exist. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, unless you have any more questions, uh, Tony, I think we need to let him go. We, we're we're a little over our time period. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, Jimmy, before we go, though, I want to make you an honorary cousin of the Crypto Cousins family. So you'll be Cousin Jimmy to us from now on, dude. <laughs> Thanks. And I appreciate you coming on the show. I really do. I think you gave us a lot of good information that our listeners will appreciate. Well, thanks for having me. Welcome back. So what would you think there, Tony? Well, I'm really glad that Jimmy decided to come on the show because he really clarified a lot of things for me. Uh, He really understands the tech, and uh, I hope we can have him back. Yeah, I hope so, too. And also, the thing I uh, wanted to make sure and say, when this uh, interview was done, which was only like a week or so ago, when we did the actual interview, um, he gave the number there were around 100 uh, lightning nodes. Now I think it's several hundred. I think it's growing at a pretty pretty fast pace. So the amount of nodes are really, really going up. Mm -hmm. It's really caught on. Hey, I want to make sure everybody also knows that we're like everywhere. We're on Discord, we're on Telegram, we're on Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. You can either go to CryptoCousin.com slash and list, say any of those, Facebook, Telegram, or whatever, or just go to CryptoCousin.com slash subscribe. But we're really trying to make sure we grow our numbers there and and trying to make it as easy as we can for everybody to uh, find us and join in the conversation. Our main thing we're trying to do is educate, I think, Tony, more than everything. When you say that's really the basis of our show, is it? educating people while we educate ourselves that's really that is the basis of our show we're you know we're here to help the new person figure out you know what is the truth what is fud uh you know who's trying to destroy bitcoin uh who's helping to build it who understands what the bitcoin protocol improvement protocol is <laughs> basics uh you know so i think we're really trying to counteract this uh what we see on uh, fake stream media which is uh, a lot of weird stuff that doesn't make any sense yeah i agree completely there so also check out um or if you want to help support the show, go to CryptoCousins.com slash donate. And if you have a comment about this show or any show or any questions, just give us a call at 747-777-9471. 747-777-9471. And a big thanks again to Jimmy for coming on the show, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Uh, anything else you want to get into before we get out of here, Tony? Because I know we didn't make 30 minutes. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, that's it for today. Looking forward to uh, to hearing more from Jimmy and from uh, Cousin Risen and all the great people who've contributed, you know, because we're learning. Uh, these guys are experts. They're in the field. And um, we're learning uh, every day how to uh, implement this technology and to ha- how to help teach people, uh, you know, what's real and what's FUD. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. You know, because when we started the show, we wanted to learn. And that's why we started a podcast. We just thought we would share what we learned. So everybody, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to the Crypto Cousins podcast. Please share this podcast with anyone you know that is interested in cryptocurrency. Your friends can subscribe on iTunes at CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes and on Android at CryptoCousins.com slash play. If you want to know more about Tony or Gary, just go to TonySakala.com or GaryLeland.com. Make sure and join us on the next episode. And thanks for listening. The Crypto 
Cousins podcast and information in the podcast are not intended as investment advice. Cryptocurrencies are risky. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always seek professional advice before making any investment. Investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies may present tremendous risks. Please understand that you are using any and all information available on or through the Crypto Cousins podcast at your own risk. Thank you.